Okay, first graders, I don't know about you, but I have been dreaming about some snow. So today we are going to be painting and stamping snow, and we've been talking a lot about the elements of our shape and creating patterns, and that's what we're keeping on focusing on today. So first I need to write my name and class code on the back. Miss G and my class code. I'm going to flip over my paper and start stamping. Now if I'm a number three chair, I need to get my materials for the day to share with my table. So I need white paint, a foam stamper, a plastic marker cap, and a skinny mini brush or two for my table to share. Now up on the board, there's a few different examples of what snow looks like and I'm gonna show you some ways to stamp snow, but also to paint snow. So some of the snow up at the front starts with a circle in the middle. So I'm just going to dip the edge of my marker cap into the paint and stamp some circles. Now some of my snow might just be circles. Some of them will turn into snowflakes. It's up to you. You have a little bit of an artist's choice to make about what your snow looks like. And as we studied snow on the board, we noticed that all snowflakes are just a little bit different. Not one of them is quite the same, kind of like you and I. I could stamp a few with my marker cap. I might use the foam stamper. I could stamp a few like that. Another stamper that I can use is the bottom of my brush. You might not have even thought of that. So I will use the bottom of my brush to dip into my paint and stamp maybe some small polka dots for snow. Now I had you get these skinny mini brushes today so that you could paint with the skinny miniest of ends. I'll clean off that edge of my brush with a blue rag so I don't accidentally get paint on me. With my skinny mini brush, I can add some lines to some of these polka dots. Up on the board is an example of a few different kinds of snow. You could copy some on the board or you could just make up your own. What's nice about using a skinny mini brush is I'm trying really hard just to paint with the brush's tippiest of toes to make a thin, skinny line. So use your skinny mini brush to maybe add some lines or patterns to your snow. These snows can look any way that you would like. Maybe I'll just even do a snowflake with just my skinny mini brush. I could do that too. I need to fill up my paper with snow. Now here's the thing first grade about making my snowflakes. I don't want my snowflakes to look like I'm in the middle of a snowstorm. I want it to feel like it's a nice gentle snowfall on a clear winter night. We've all kind of felt what that looks like or seen what that looks like where I can kind of admire each of my snowflakes. If it's a snowstorm or a blizzard, then I won't be able to see my snowflakes. I'll just see solid white. And I really want my viewer or the person looking at my snowflakes in the hall to notice how beautiful and different each of these snowflakes are. So I can paint with my skinny mini brush as well some different kinds of snow. Now once I feel like I've added enough snowflakes, of different kinds, I am ready to bring this painting to the drying rack. So I'm going to carry it flat like a lunch tray and go as low as I can go, low, 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 over to the drying rack. Now if I still have more time today, I'm going to think about adding or creating some mittens to go with my snow and that's something that we'll finish next week. But if you have some extra time, you're going to make your mittens. So mittens are the same on both sides, they're kind of like symmetrical. Okay, one right and one left. You notice how my thumbs point into the middle? A sneaky art trick to do this is to fold my paper in half and to just trace one of my hands. I keep my fingers together and my thumb out. If it's hard for you to trace a mitten, maybe you could ask your neighbor, hey neighbor, could you maybe help me trace out my mitten for today? And of course, all of our art friends are very helpful and they would say, yes I can. Cut, 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 around to cut out my mitt. Now because I'm gonna have two mittens, and you might notice this with your mittens that you wear outside, is 
they get lost really easily. So I open them up. Now I have two mittens with the thumbs pointing in. I need to flip them over and write my name on right away. Miss G and my class code. Miss G and my class code. Let's double check. Are my mittens facing the right way? Thumbs pointing in. Good deal. My trash to trash goes in the garbage. And I'm going to move on to drawing some patterns with Sharpie. Sharpies are over at the drive-thru. You know all about creating patterns with shapes and lines and colors. So start by drawing maybe some line patterns or some shape patterns that you would want on your mittens. These are kind of like your dream mittens. If you could have any mittens that you wanted, what would they look like? So my pattern's going zigzag line, straight line, zigzag line, straight line, zigzag line. What comes next? Straight line. I think my dream mittens would have another shape up here, maybe even a snowflake. These are your dream mittens. What are they going to look like? Now what I do on one mitten, they are a pair, I'm going to do on my other mitten. So I need to do that exact same pattern over here. First graders, I'm so excited to see not only your snow paintings, but also to see how you start your mittens today. Good work listening.